Divine Truth Feedback Jesus, Mary and others give personal or group feedback to people who have asked for personal assistance. David Graham, a man who is sincere about his desire to progress, who wants some direct assistance about his own blockages to growth, talks to Jesus about what they discussed privately the evening before about his personal situation. Recorded on the 1st of October 2015 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. G'day there, how, are you? how is everyone today? We're, I'm here with David Graham, a man that I've just met yesterday, and he comes from Canberra in Australia, and he's joining me here because he wants to know some things about uh, his own progression, personal things about his own progression, and what he was looking for some advice about how he can improve his progression, but also how he can improve how he loves people around him and, and does not feel as much um, like he's dealing with law of compensation effects of not being able to love people around him. So um, we were going to discuss some of those matters. So I've had an opportunity already to discuss with David a lot of things. So I know a bit more about him now. And, and so we'll just get probably straight into giving you some direct feedback about different situations that you face in your life rather than sort of explaining to the audience all of those situations. Um, so I think what I'd like to do is start, I feel there's four or five things I'd like to raise with you um, based on what we've talked about already. And the first one is that what I've noticed about you personally is that you are very closed emotionally. You're not allowing yourself to open up to people around you emotionally. Would you agree with that, David? Or yes, you? I would. Yeah, yeah. And we've had a bit of a discussion, haven't we, about how, what you can do to open up emotionally. But I think what we need to do for the audience's sake is perhaps just discuss a few of those basic principles that we talked about today um, that, will help you, that will help you open up more emotionally. Remember one of the principles we discussed was that if you love somebody or you want to love, that truth goes hand in hand with love. And it's not just truth about the external universe or anything, it's truth about how you feel every single time you interact with somebody else. And remember, we talked about that together today, about the fact that you often are withholding how you feel while you're communicating with other people. Um, and as a result, they're receiving from you words that say one thing, and feelings that sometimes say even completely the opposite thing, which obviously means that anybody who's feeling what you, with you and then also hearing you is processing two different things when they're interacting with you. They're processing firstly the feelings that are coming at them and then the thoughts or, or the words that you're expressing going through their brain coming at them. And quite often those two things are completely separate to each other. Yeah. And what do you feel about that discussion now that we've talked about that? Like, um, do, you, do you feel that's a sort of an accurate assessment of what you've been doing in your interactions with people? I or? do. I, I think it's a very accurate assessment yep. of, of how I interact with everyone around me. Mm -hmm. um, I withhold emotion, um, my, my personal feelings, yep. and um, so I'm not honoring truth I'm uh, there's mixed messages there's a disharmony or a disconnect between what I'm saying how I'm verbally interacting mm -hmm. on one level but the emotion that's flowing from me to that person and and um, it's also I, I uh, understand affecting my receipt of their emotion of course yeah so uh, the question I had for you is, what do you feel is the emotion that drives that desire to sort of tune everything down for the public consumption um, that makes you feel like you have to modify what you verbalise? Um, what do you feel that emotion is? Um, I feel there's a desire to keep the peace, yeah. to, um, to be accepted, to not um, uh, create controversy and the potential for um, uh, uh, an angry or um, uh, uh, um, c c conflict. Yep. Um, 
uh, and, and uh, you know other types of um, you know harmful and, and negative <laughs> emotions that I don't want to experience. So they're basically all fear-based emotions yeah. that uh, surround how people will perceive you. Yeah, and, the, and the, I think the consequences that I will feel as a result. Yes. Yeah. So when they get angry or upset with you, how would you then feel? If, you, if, if somebody was even disappointed with you, how do you feel? I think I would feel a, um, a sense of worthlessness and rejection, yeah. Um, yeah. among other things, um, uh, that that person didn't like or love me, yeah. depending on who they might be. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so, so if we look at that as an issue from an emotional perspective, can you see that in a way you're modifying your emotional truth to uh, change the impact that it has upon other people so that when they respond to you, you can sort of to a degree control how their response will be towards yourself. Mm. So. So this is a thing keeping you emotionally closed down with your family, friends, and you know, and acquaintances even at work sometimes too. Yeah. Um, and this was a general pattern in conversation over the day we've spent with you as well, where we were noticing that this was happening quite frequently, where there's feelings coming from you that don't match the words that are coming out of your mouth. Yeah. And and remember, I discussed with you the importance that to have the feelings match the words because otherwise the other person who's receiving these things from you is quite confused. Mm. They, they don't really know um, whether the, what you're saying is the real thing or what you're feeling, what they're feeling from you is the real thing. And that, that makes it very difficult for them to know you, which is in fact your purpose <laughs> to, to not be known yeah. fully. Um, now, um, as I mentioned to you, that also would create a lot of frustration in your relationship with your wife mm -hmm. for her because she'll, she'll feel like she can't really know you um, and uh, it's almost like every time there's a conversation together, you're withholding yourself and withholding your true feelings and sometimes it's just great to get those true feelings out there no matter how hard they are to address or deal with mm -hmm. rather than just have them all bottled up all the time. And, uh, and not being expressed. And truth creates emotional intimacy. And uh, in a relationship, emotional intimacy is only possible if truth is being shared on, on both par by both parties. Mm. And if you allow yourself to share the truth and also allow yourself to hear the truth coming at you, then there's a much greater, um, usually much greater uh, tendency towards emotional intimacy. And of course, emotional intimacy creates other intimacies like sexual intimacy and so forth. Yeah. So I feel that's one area that you can practically work on quite easily by, by allowing yourself to ask yourself every conversation you're having with every person, mm -hmm. am, am I reflecting my true feelings here or am I just modifying my true feelings so that they, you know, they say something else? And when you, like in the conversation you had today with Catherine, you know, there was a ramp up of um, conflict occurring in the conversation without both of you analysing what was going on for yourselves in terms of um, what the felt. real feelings were and how you felt and why you felt what mm -hmm. you felt um, as well. And that you need to get into the habit of expressing that. And the only way you get in the habit of expressing that is by dealing with the underlying fear that causes you to just not do that. So that means addressing this emotion of wanting other people's approval at any cost, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Wanting other people's peace, you know, not feeling like you've got to create peace at all costs, no matter what the result is to yourself and how much you have to suppress yourself, those mm -hmm. kind of things. Mm -hmm. they're, they're the emotions to pray about there. Like allow, allow God to expose them, pray to God that you want them exposed and then allow God to expose them for you in situations where God's prompting you and going, here it is again, here it is again, here it is again. Yeah. This, is what, this is what you're doing. This is creating no emotional intimacy. Yeah. 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 So I thought that's uh, the first thing I'd like to mention. Um, the second thing I've noticed is that you avoid examining your own attractions and and that's 
And what I mean by that is the law of attraction is working perfectly at all times and at, in all situations. And so, and so in the situation, one of the best things you can do, bearing in mind that the law of attraction is God's messenger of truth to you, like it's a law that God created so you know the truth of what's happening. And so the law of attraction is a very loving, beautiful law to tell you what's going on in your life at any moment. So if you're attracting an argumentative discussion, for example, with somebody, and yet you're trying to be peaceful, trying to be peaceful, trying to be peaceful, and yet you, they are getting more and more ramped up and, and it feels more and more argumentative and it's coming at you more and more, um, then that's a, an attraction event, it's an event your soul is attracting to tell you something. And the key is to ask yourself, what is it telling me? Now, it could be telling you a number of things. First, it could be telling you that you're not open to hearing them, or it could be telling you that they're not open to hearing you, or it could be telling you that both of you are in a competition, mm -hmm. or, or whatever. But, but the key is for you to feel about it and, and allow yourself to see what's actually going on. And so what I've noticed is a lot of times you're interacting at the at the top layer and remember earlier i was talking about like it's like the earth crust or the earth's surface and then the crust and then and then the inner core and uh, the outer core and the inner core and basically you're operating on the surface of the crust yep. in many conversations not allowing yourself to be known and also in some ways sort of implying to the other person that they shouldn't try to get to know you either or they shouldn't try to become emotional with you either because you're going to try and calm them down or or, or, or shut them down in some way. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Mm -hmm. So I feel that would help a lot if you could just pray to God about allowing yourself to see the attraction events that occur. Yeah. But the real issue I wanted to talk to you about, the third issue, which is related to the first two, is this swinging thing that happens in your life. So if I give some uh, explanation to the viewers, if you like, first, what you've found through your life, what David's found is that, is that he's gone from being one type of person, like a very sensitive, kind, um, shall we say, in tune sort of with his environment type of a person to a degree, um, who, who, what do you call that? The, the yin or the yang? Oh, I can't the, remember. Yeah. Which the, the yin boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yin gentle. Boy, gentle, kind boy sort of thing. And then there are times when you've swung in entirely the opposite direction and you've become obviously in what you call the yang boy then, or the, the boy that's, explain, explain it for. Oh, uh, well, uh, perhaps a, 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 the fire boy, the active, dynamic yeah, um, tough yeah um, uh, extrovert yes yep. um, manifestation of male yeah. energy and yeah. power yeah. so you sort of swung from this real introverted male if you like through to the extroverted male and in times back to the introverted as well and when did you meet your wife uh, in the at the height at the extroverted of my, yes. <laughs> male yeah. side of things, so she probably got a pretty false impression at that point about what your true personality and nature is, um, which she would probably be a bit confused about. Um, so she was you're attracted to at the time. She was attracted to it at the time, but but once that um, that state is no longer there, obviously she'll be confused because where's that guy gone? <laughs> and that was the guy I thought I married. Yeah. Um, and so this swinging back and forward, and, and we talked about why this swinging back and forward happens. And you've had this, uh, and, and been encouraged to have by other people, this concept that it's almost like a natural progression of a male's uh, development. It's almost like there's this concept that that's what happens during a male's normal cycle of life, shall we call it. Mm. And I raised the concept with you, actually, that what is actually happening is you're responding to the external injuries of your environment and um, and and what the environment is doing is pulling you from one state to the other and because of your inability to connect to your true self your true nature and and see your true nature and express only your true nature you swing back and forward between what you feel is good and what your environment projects at you is good and so what happens is as you're growing in age, you've got on one hand up until, what was it, sort of 14, 15, oh, 16, 15, 15, 15. you were quite a sensitive lad, 
um, fairly introverted, um, didn't have too many friends. Um, you were probably classified as someone who was more in touch with his feminine side, shall we call it that? Or yeah, yeah, I think probably a bit more academic. Oh, certainly some sporting. Yeah, um, but a bit more academic. There, probably not there. so hooked into the people around you. Um, certainly not an extrovert. And then you went, you you changed a school, mm. and during that change, you you flicked into this alter ego almost um, mm. of the extrovert, the guy who was very good at sport, and obviously you have some physical uh, sporting prowess to be good at sport. In this case, the Australian AFL, um, and and became very good at it, very well respected and liked amongst your friends and peers, um, an extrovert, and uh, of course getting involved sometimes in the in that lifestyle as well, which means a fair bit of drinking and uh, and occasional drug taking and so forth. Um, and that's the period of your life where you met your girl. Um, and then after after that, the shall we say the pain of that life court starts to catch up with you. You then feel drawn back to this other person, this more introverted, caring, wanting to care for his family and so forth and, and what most people would assimilate with growing up um, as a as an individual and you swing back to that and remember i was talking to you about this swinging that's occurring is actually not occurring for the reasons you believe it to be occurring but rather it's because you're not yet connected to who you really are inside of yourself and loving that and it's like you don't trust that the, the thing that god created the real you is the thing that you need to be you're, and you're swinging from what society wants from you in one direction and what generally happens is from a male's perspective is a male goes too much in one direction and society says no hang on a sec you're a bit too sensitive now you, you, you're stressing me out you know and um, i want you to be more manly man type of thing and so society's pressure is and family pressure and even wife pressure and those kind of pressures can be i, I want you to become more the manly man again because that's what i know and that's what i'm comfortable with and and instead of you becoming just just moving a little bit and come becoming that you swing right across the other side and and now society's saying, no, don't do that, don't do that. So, you know, that, that, you, that, that's not a responsible man. He's, not, he's no good. And, and so then you have to swing back and forward and back and forward. And, and eventually, at some point in your future, <laughs> you will eventually get to the centipede, you know, the balanced, if you like, of who you really are and be that. But, but the question is how long that's going to take you because I've observed many men taking many thousands of years to get to that point and that's probably not what you want. Okay. So, and we talked about the need for you to, to start just allowing yourself to be who you truly are with everybody no matter what the result is. And remember we talked about that everyone won't like you. Um, you know, there'll be some people who won't like you and there'll be some people who do. Um, but everyone will know they're getting the real you. And you mentioned to me that some of the issues with your wife is that sometimes she doesn't feel like she's getting the real you. Um, and you obviously at times feel like you're not being the real you. Yeah, yeah. withholding of emotion. Yeah. And uh, not, not consciously, but now I'm aware that yeah. that's what I've been doing. Yeah, yeah. So I feel that's a pretty um, big issue that's telling you that the underlying emotion is still this desire for the external approval and peace, peace with your external environment, rather than uh, focus on being yourself no matter what, even if that has a habit of uh, triggering your external environment in some way. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah. Yeah. And if you truly love yourself, and this is an issue of love of self, then you will allow yourself to be yourself under all circumstances. Now that doesn't mean you would allow yourself to be unloving under those circumstances. So if yourself is, I'm angry, um, you wouldn't project that rage at people around you, but you would go outside, maybe beat a bat against a, base, a baseball bat against a or punch or something and allow yourself to express this rage because that's an honouring of yourself, an honouring of your true feelings. 
<clears throat> eventually as you release those feelings, you will become your real self without those feelings. So, so, so it's basically a process of slowly removing from yourself all of the feelings that cause you to, um, to become unloving, but in the process, you're still being yourself. You're not swinging from what one set of, in, of your environment wants you to be to another of what your environment wants you to be. You're, you're, you know yourself. And when you know yourself, you can love somebody else as well and, and bear your heart to them because you know what you're bearing. Um, so I feel that's really important for your progression. And so these are matters that I feel that you need to pray about. Um, allow, like there's a lot happening around you in your life, I feel, telling you, just like we had an example this morning of the conversation between yourself and Catherine, there's a lot going on there telling you some of these things already, but you're not noticing them. And the key is to allow yourself to become aware. And, and I feel that's probably the fourth issue I'd like to raise with you. And that is, um, you believe you know things that you don't yet know. And, and this is going to be a major issue with progression with God, because God's trying to tell you things you don't know all the time. Um, and what, what I've noticed myself in my own progression it, is that God's got this beautiful interaction all the time going on where God's always trying to explain to you what's happening to you in your life and why it's happening. And it's just your ability to absorb or be willing to absorb things that you don't know that determines how rapidly you accept this, these things. And what I've learned to do in my life is to accept things I don't know very rapidly. So, so I'm always sensitive to all the things I don't know, e even um, allowing myself to be aware that I don't know is very important because um, that's the only way you can learn something. And I feel there's a bit of this feeling in you that there's certain things you know, and you're pretty locked on to those things. And, I, and I'd suggest that you need to allow yourself to be aware that there's a lot more that you don't know than you do know at present, and allow yourself to be open to the suggestions God gives. Because it's very hard for God, give to, go, for God to give you a suggestion when you already believe you know the answer to what God's talking about. Yeah, yeah. So that's another area I feel that if you work with that, then you'll, you'll have some good progress, actually. Yeah. yeah. Then I was just wondering whether there's anything you want to talk about. I know we've probably done a lot of talking and that's probably our mistake. We should have probably got together and just had the conversations we've had over the last two days um. <laughs> or the last day uh, on camera. But... Mm. <clears throat> because we, it always is best said the first time around, generally. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, <coughs> no, I don't think there's anything in particular. Mm. Um, I, think we've, um, oh, I guess completely consistently with what you've just said about um, my perceptions of truth, a lot of what I came here anticipating um, you might be... Um, suggesting or um, uh, prescribing perhaps for me to sort of take away and, and uh, things that might benefit me have proven to be quite uh, different to what I originally sort of set my expectations as being. Yeah, can you uh, maybe explain that, like how, explain um, yeah, what okay. expectations you had? Well, I... Um, if we get back to sort of three of the the main reasons why people are blocked to um, processing emotion mm -hmm. uh, and those involving uh, a lack of faith in God and or self. Yes, yes. Uh, firstly, and secondly, um, uh, a lack of desire for truth. Yes. Uh, God's truth about uh, who they are as God's creation. Yes. Um, and thirdly, people's unwillingness to feel or to be emotionally overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. um, I came here thinking that it was the third of those, my resistance to being emotionally overwhelmed, mm -hmm. that was my main barrier. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that that's still a, a, a significant... Um, you know, the, the ability to be emotional in every situation and to really mm -hmm. tune into emotion is... is um, well, perhaps if we could talk more about that subject now, like... 
So, so you felt before you came that maybe what you were not doing was allowing yourself to be emotionally overwhelmed. Exactly. Whereas I feel that actually you're a very sensitive person and you can feel the emotions of other people quite well. Right. And in fact, the problem is that you feel the other people's emotions and well enough that you conform your life to their emotion. Sure. Right. Um, but you're not feeling your own emotion. Yep. So that, that's the issue there more than... So feeling emotion is not the problem. You, you're able to feel emotion, but you put a priority on feeling other people's emotion first. Right. And, and that's where you get yourself into trouble. Mm -hmm. And because you're feeling their emotion first, you then feel you must modify your behavior to suit their emotion. And that causes this modification process where you swing, but it also causes these other issues you have in, converse, in conversation where people don't feel that they're getting the real you because the reality is they're, they're not. not. They're getting what you perceive to be what they want <laughs> and that you're giving them that. Mm. And that's the real problem there. Mm. Yeah. And that's untruthful and that's unloving. Yes, isn't it? it is. Towards myself and towards them. Yes. Um, so, uh, getting back to those three, three things. So um, maybe truth, if we go back. Truth was one that I, yeah. I didn't think I had um, an issue with. Truth. An issue with. I thought mm. I was a, a truth seeker and, and a lover of truth, and I thrived on truth. And I agree. I was nourished by truth, and, and that I think that is the case. That but, is the case. But you've uh, drawn my attention to the fact that I don't bring truth to my interactions with others because I don't bring emotion, my own emotion, or or nor do I honour their the other person's emotion. Real emotion. Real emotion. Real emotion. Not what they're saying to you, but what they really feel about you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you're you're thinking that you're being truthful on this intellectual layer. And what I, I'm saying to you is, no, there's this layer of emotional truth that needs to begin yeah. where you're accurately reflecting the feelings you have to the other person and you're accurately allowing yourself to see their feelings for you, no matter what the words are that come out of their mouth and the words that come out of yours. And in fact, I'm even encouraging you to make sure that the words that come out of your mouth, at least you haven't got control over them, but you, at least the words that come out of your mouth are, a, are an accurate reflection of the emotion that you're feeling sure. for, in the same interaction. Yeah. yeah. And that level of truth is something yeah. that hasn't been present. You know, that's right. Mm. So um, that's an important level of truth. Probably the more important, <laughs> clearly the more important level of truth. Yeah. Because everything about truth is emotional and love based. So, so, you know, it's one thing for us to think we're telling the truth, quite another for us to accurately reflect our emotional condition while we're stating truth. And, that, and that's the thing that I've observed most people have trouble with. Yeah. It's very, you know, even most people who have a desire for truth um, are still frequently not reflecting the actual feelings they have to the other. And you can do that with love. Like you can say to them, like, I disagree with you when you disagree with them. Mm. You don't do that. No, no you go, oh, yes, no worries. I see what you're saying. <laughs> While at this other, uh, inside you're going, no, I don't agree with that. <laughs> but, but you don't accurately say just, oh, no, I don't agree with that. Like you can still say it in a loving manner and, and people who love each other don't have to agree. Um, but you can do it in a loving way. But what you do is you cover over and you don't even say you don't agree. Mm. So no one really knows where they stand with you. They don't have an accurate concept of where they stand. Yeah. Mm. So that's an important issue. Yeah. 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 And also there was the issue of receiving God's truth that we talked about. And that's the law of attraction to, you know, to see that God's trying to show you things that you think you've resolved, but haven't been resolved. Right, so therefore you don't know the truth there, yeah. and to allow yourself to to be more humble to what God's showing you through that law, and to to let the law show you what's really going on. What you know, for, and what I notice a lot for yourself is that you you often believe that other people's motivations are better than they are, because you want to believe that, because it's a way of maintaining peace. Sure. If, if you <laughs> right. if you saw that they were. Um, more unloving than they actually are, you might have to say something about it and then you might feel there's more conflict. So, mm. so a way of maintaining peace is to ignore 
some of the things coming at you sometimes. And also, um, so the law of attraction is there showing you, well, hang a sec, I'm willing to sacrifice truth under certain circumstances. And those circumstances basically all surround this issue of peaceful interaction. Mm -hmm. If I feel the interaction is going to go away from a peaceful interaction, I'm probably not going to reflect my emotional truth to the person. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And the issue of faith, what were your feelings before you came about that? Because you said to me that you didn't feel you had too much of a problem there. Oh, I, I, th I thought I, I thought it was, well, there was a complete inverse uh, uh, take on, on, on the, the truth and the, 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 um, the, the feeling or humility side of it, whereas I thought one thing and it, the reverse was true. Yeah. I thought my faith in God and my faith in myself um, to be able to change and to become the person that uh, I'm capable of becoming was not too bad. So we're in, 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 in the middle. It was pretty good. It was, okay. wasn't too bad, but wasn't great. Could probably be better, but I would maybe wasn't exactly sure where or how. I probably had a, a general sense that it, um, it should be better, but mm -hmm. um, didn't see that as a main barrier or obstacle to progressing as yeah. much as I did yeah. perhaps my um, ability to open up and feel the hurt and the injuries I need to feel I thought that was where I was going to mm -hmm. struggle and I still need to go through that mm -hmm. at some point um, but the, the process looks a lot different to what I had envisaged yeah. it will be a lot yeah. I think a bit different and we talked a lot didn't we about um, how in a way there's not much trust of God there because you you don't believe God the real you that God created is worth letting out to society mm -hmm. <laughs> if we could put it that way yeah you keep your the real you under wraps under control you know like you're you're quite considered in the way in which you interact even with your closest people in your life your wife and and closest friends you you're quite considered about how you interact with them. And that's a reflection of the fact that you don't trust that the thing that God created, the real you, should not should not be let out. It's only mm. for mm. certain occasions even. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm. And that is an issue of faith in God, mm. an issue of trusting that the way God created you to be is the best possible thing you can be. And... And if you let that person out, you let that person be known, you let that person be shown, there'll be some people who might not be too happy with it, but everyone who loves you would be definitely happy with that. Yeah. Yeah. So they the main things that you felt before you came? You, you also raised uh, this issue of repentance and forgiveness. You, you... Yeah, I thought um, I was very... Um, desirous of progression towards God and towards love and I know that uh, or my sense is my understanding was that um, I wasn't going to be able to uh, to receive and to feel God's love until I do repent and, yep. to, and forgive um, and I'd had I'd made very little if any progress in that regard and I um, was I guess wondering what what it was that I needed to do more of. Uh, what was it that my what what strategies or processes did my emotional processing need to take mm. Um, mm. To, to be able to? And we uh, sort of we have talked that. about this primary addiction, haven't we, of wanting to have peace, wanting to you know have the approval or the acceptance of others and have a peaceful interaction with other people and, and that that is actually an addiction and if you think about it and this is something we haven't discussed but if you think about it a lot of the behaviors that you're unhappy about now the things that you think you did wrong in your life that of course damaged other people they were actually triggered by that underlying emotion if you think about it they were caused by that underlying emotion of attempting to gain the approval and acceptance of the world around you in some way so for example when you went through what you call your you know quite dark period of your life and um, 
the pull towards that dark period of your life was driven by this desire for acceptance, desire mm. for approval, mm. desire for a peaceful interaction where you were honoured and accepted by a group of people. And then you engaged the behaviours they engaged in an effort to gain their approval and also feeling like you had it and, main and could maintain it in that place. But in the process of engaging that behaviour, you hurt other people. Mm. And and in particular, the one you're concerned about is the effect it's had on your, your eldest child. Mm -hmm. And you feel, you know, that you've hurt that person quite significantly. And you feel quite sad about that inside of yourself. But can you see that even that hurt was actually caused by this underlying addiction of trying to please everyone and trying to have this peace and, and harmony with your environment and get the approval and acceptance of others. So, so, so even the actions taken that caused the harm of others were driven by this quite strong underlying addiction that's present. Mm. Yeah. And so I feel the beginning of uh, forgiveness or repentance for you is really about seeing the cause of what triggered the, what you s see as dark behaviour. Do you follow me? Mm -hmm. And the other thing that triggers any, that what you consider triggers dark behaviour, where, where people in your life have been upset with you, was when you feel, when you have held on to doing things for other people for such a long period of time, uh, not being happy with what you're doing. Right. And then all of a sudden you've had this sort of knee-jerk reaction that I'm off <laughs> yeah. and away you go uh, to get away from that life. Um, and, and that, of course, hurts people because they think, what, where's he gone now? What, what's going on? Like, and it creates quite a lot of uh, distrust or mistrust in people around you when they feel like they, one moment you're there and they think they can rely on you and the next moment you're gone and disappeared and they've got no idea why, why it happened or where you went. And, and even that has been caused by this, this same thing of suppressing yourself in order to please other people. And if you had not have suppressed yourself so much, then it's highly unlikely you would have had knee-jerk reactions in your life where you went off and did things that, you know, in a, in a sort of a rapid way without considering the other, per other people involved in your life. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah, so it's important, I feel, for you to see that actually some of these core addictions are the real cause. And then the more important thing to do is to feel why the addiction is in you. What, what, what is the underlying reason from your childhood that causes these particular things to rear their heads under certain circumstances? And that's where, you know, some of the causal emotion lies. So you've got the blocking emotion, which is the basically working through the addiction you have to gain the approval and acceptance of the world around you and to do it in such a way that is peaceful and, and you know, has no conflict and to only share yourself when there is no conflict in doing so. And I'm suggesting to you, no, share yourself even when there's, <laughs> like it <laughs> causes all sorts of potential dramas, still say what you feel. And you can do it in a loving way, which we've discussed but you need to allow yourself to do it. And I'm very sure that your wife and those people and your children and other people around you that are close to you will very much appreciate seeing real dad and real husband and real, you know, the real person, the real David, rather than um, the person that David believes they want to see, you know? Sure. Yeah. And I feel that addiction is the primary addiction to pray about. Mm -hmm. Remember, we also talked about prayer in terms of it being a longing. So, so when you're not receiving God's love, when you pray, so you know, many people, they sort of sit down or lay down and long for God's love, but it doesn't come to them. In that process, we need to understand that that's because there's an addiction in the way. There's a, there's, there's, there's a blockage, if you like, in the way of receiving God's love coming to us when we have a sincere longing for it, but it doesn't come. It means that there's some insincerity there that, that needs to be adjusted. So what I do myself there is I, 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 I stop praying for God's love and I start praying for God to show me what the blockage is, mm -hmm. right? And developing a sincere desire to know the blockage is the, is the key factor. 
and uh, and so whenever you feel yourself blocked the key thing is to is to have a sincere desire to know what the block is mm -hmm. and and god through the law of attraction and also through you know spirits in the spirit world who want to tell you will arrange events more events even than the law of attraction would normally bring so that you know mm -hmm. and what i've found under those circumstances is it's rare for me to not find out in a day or two um, it's a very stubborn thing inside of me if it takes a month and it's a really stubborn thing if it takes a year <laughs> do you know what i mean yeah um, and i feel that that would be good for you to do too so if you're not feeling god's love come to you start praying for for the truth to be exposed to you about why that's the case rather than still continuing to frustratingly pray for god's love when not receive it you follow okay. yeah yeah, yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to raise that you think of that, that you'd like no, to? No, I think, I think we've covered um, all the ground that needs to be covered. Yeah. That's, that's how yeah. I feel about yeah. it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'd really love to encourage you to, to be more expressive of your emotional condition. Mm. And... You've got a wonderful opportunity to do so with your wife because I feel she's probably crying out for you to do so, like in the sense that... She, and, and there's a bit of her that possibly would be freaked out about you doing so because there's parts of you that probably she's never seen before. Um, so, you know, but, but that's part of the, the joy of doing it is you get to know the real person. And, and of course, um, you may feel that's a terrible risk and you have to work through some fears about that, about it being a terrible risk to to actually fully expose yourself to another but that's what in, what generates intimacy you know mm. that's and it also is what generates intimacy between you and god mm. um god knows you already but he's waiting for you to know you and to be willing to actually be you all the time right yeah and and because you've got such a strong endeavor to not be you all the time yeah. and to be whatever somebody else wants you to be it's very hard for him then under those circumstances to react to, to you. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So I think that covers most of the things I, that I wanted to say. Um, just, I feel if you go over that, that, that's more of a summary of probably what we've discussed in the last, you know, 24 hours or so, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and, um, and I feel if we, you know, I feel if you, Put that into practice in your day-to-day -day life your life's going to change quite significantly and you might find it a bit freakish uh, for a bit in terms of how significantly it changes but um, i'm sure many of the people around you who love you are going to enjoy seeing like the real david with a you know and the real david's personality and the real david's true feelings and desires and passions rather than just having somebody that they suspect is just doing things for them all the time and and not being himself you know mm. okay. yeah excellent yeah no, it's good david it's good to meet you thank hey. you and good to get to know you a bit thanks though joe yeah it's yeah. been great yeah and uh david stayed with us last night so so that was down in the tent so that was a different experience and next time hopefully we'll get to meet your family maybe if yeah. you come up again yeah. um yeah i'm not sure when we'll be down in canberra next time but um but yeah, it'd be, be nice to catch up with your family as well and see, see them and even to ask them what they think about dad. All right, <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah, sometimes it's um, our perceptions of ourselves are very different hey, to what other people or how other people perceive us. And it's sometimes good to gain a perception of ourselves. So, although in your case, you're always looking at, other pe at yourself through other people's eyes rather than your own and that's the that's the big issue that you have, isn't it? Yeah. In your life, really. Mm. Just being yourself and letting everyone around you know the true you. Yeah. Yeah. No worries, right. my friend. Well, thanks for your time today. And thanks, Ojo. It's good that you came and visited us. And oh, it's been great. Yeah. And I just want to say probably to our viewers that um, David is here because he had a sincere email to us <laughs> requesting some of our time at the time you said that you didn't really know whether we would respond or not and um, but you've had a suspicion we might 
um, because you knew that your feelings were sincere and you wanted to have some feedback. Yeah, and that's what we've responded to with giving David our time because of we feel his sincerity. Yeah, yeah. I'm very grateful to you yeah. and, and Mary and to the guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm very much appreciated. Yeah, it's our pleasure. Yeah, but it, I just wanted to compliment you on your sincerity, my friend. Um, I just feel that um, sincerity is a is a thing that's pretty rare nowadays, and uh, and I see even amongst a lot of people who are listening to divine truth there's not a lot of sincerity about you know trying to see their real self or things like that and and having a desire for truth is uh, something that a lot of people are still avoid quite significantly even though they've heard divine truth for many years so it's really good that they that you have that sincerity and and i feel that's the thing that will carry you forward you know yeah yeah Anyway, it's good to get to know you a bit, and, and thanks for coming along. Yeah, same. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. AJ. Pleasure, man. Yeah.